today. It's verse 115, and it's a interesting subject to hear about and to meditate. And in between, also, we will listen a little bit about the glorification of Shila Rupa Mandrari or Shri Rupa Goswami, because yesterday was his disappearance day. And actually, the whole uh, Julan festival is also somehow connected to the glories of Rupa Manjari or Rupa Goswami, because in Vrindavan, I think it was augur inaugurated also by him. The Swing Festival. And then we have this week also Balaram Purnima. In a few days, I think in two days, it's a full moon, Purnima in Sanskrit. And um, that is always a very special time. Because every Purnima is uh, dedicated to a special spiritual empowerment or meditation. And uh, in two, two days, we have Balaram Purnima, and sometimes it's called also Balaram uh, Jayanti. And also, we call it Raksha Bandhan. That is also a very sweet time in Rindavan, because all the brothers and the sisters, they tie uh, bracelets around the arms. Uh, like a friendship bracelet or like a friend, like a bracelet of love and a bracelet of affection. Brotherly, sisterly, friendly. Anyone who loves someone can give them, uh, like a little bracelet. Maybe you have been in Vrindavan at that time. And, but, uh, uh, like a traditional thing, it is between brothers and sisters, but it's not limited to the, Blood family. I will chant the verse that Naratam Das Thakur was singing. Gupate Sadibe Siddhi Sadana Navada Bhakti Pratana Karibe Dainya Sahada Kori Hari Sakitan Sadayana Naman Krishna Vinara Sabhabadha. Attain perfection in secrecy by practicing the nine kinds of devotion, like hearing, chanting, remembering, and what else is there? Doing prayers, bowing down, doing archan, like puja or in the mind also do the worship. Dasyam, being a servant. Sakyam, being in a friendly relationship. Atmani Vedanam, giving the whole body. Or Pada Sevanam, fall, following the, the, uh, those who are serving Shishi Radha Mohan and Shigurdi. These are the nine kinds of uh, bhakti. I will always pray in humility and blissfully perform Hari Sankirtan. Without Krishna, everything, all mundane things are just, is just an obstacle. Jai Gurudev! Radhe, oh my God, you are back, Radhe. <laughs> nice to see you, Gopika. Gopi, Radhe, also, my God. I am so lucky to have you, Dashan, finally again. <laughs> nice to see you, nice to feel you. Nice that you're back home, Radhe. So it is about the external and internal practice. That is a very interesting subject. In this verse, the blessed author reveals the essential objective of the Raganuga Sadakas Bhajan. First, he says, attain perfection in secrecy by practicing nine kinds of devotion like hearing, chanting, and remembering. I will always pray in humility. Attaining perfection in secrecy means 
that the sadaka meditates on his mentally conceived spiritual body and thus renders loving service to Shishi Radha Mohan day and night. Along with that nine types of conventional or external forms of devotion, like hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, are practiced in the external physical body. So that is very interesting. That first of all, attaining perfection in secrecy means that the sadaka meditates on his mentally conceived spiritual body and thus renders loving service to Sri Radha Krishna or Mohan day at night. So according to our ability, Jai Braja Sundari Gauravani. We are listening uh, what we have heard from Gurudev and all other Mahajans. And then we meditate day and night according to our ability about serving them. First of all, we meditate on serving Sri Radharani. And that is called attaining perfection and secrecy. Because that is internal practice. It's our inner worship. And we have heard also that on this path of coming to this level of inner worship, there is different stages. First, we remember Radha and Mohan and their daily activities. We try to think of serving them and that is mixed with the bodily consciousness. That is very natural that we are mixing our bodily consciousness with what is actually pure transcendental uh, such an ananda realm of uh, divine love. Because usually we remember things related to the body or to the mental status. And therefore we are practicing also the different kinds of uh, forms of bhakti and to become purified. What Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, we we practice Cheto Dapanamajanam, the cleaning of the mirror of the of the mind, of the consciousness. That all will help us to become more conscious and more able to do our internal uh, service to Radharani. And then we come to a stage by practicing, practicing, trying and listening and absorbing and digesting we come to a platform that is called bhava bhakti means that becomes a natural way to always remember and live in the connection to our swamini and our services and that is also already a very high uh, pure level and we could call this level the level of the liberated soul if you are interested in that, if you want to re read more and meditate more about that, it is mentioned uh, very uh, extensively in Vilap Kushmanjali verse 65 in the purport. And I remember that because Gurudev was speaking about it. He even sent to me, read it, Suniti. It is a very important uh, Sometimes here, sometimes there, sometimes everywhere. But then by uh, continuously hearing and practicing, we come to a, a purified state of mind and is called, you know, Shuddha Bhakti. That is more pure. And then it's the mind is more able to continuously and focusedly remember everything that we want to remember like who I am and how is my body in a spiritual form and what is my name. And if I don't have it yet, if Gurudev didn't give this to me yet, then I can generally meditate on Tulsi Manjari, on Rupa Manjari services, how they are doing their services 
and how they are serving Srimati Radhika. And, you know, slowly but surely we will come, like Krishna has promised us in Bhagavad Gita, to the ultimate goal. And the ultimate goal is Prema Bhakti, because then we are always deeply absorbed in, in Swarupa Avesh, in the perception of our spiritual identity, and always uh, free of mental or bodily identification. So that's why also Baba is saying here, we are me mentally uh, meditating on the spiritual body and se uh, rendering service, and that is uh, attaining perfection in secrecy means something internal. It's not necessarily that we are always talking, like they say later, to every Tom, Dick, and Harry <laughs> about it, not uh, sharing it with all people who really don't, uh, how do you say, don't know nothing about it. But we keep also this for our Sajatriya Sangha, for the devotees who are like-minded. If anybody would like to share on this, you're, you're welcome. Please help me here. This is a very deep and also sweet subject. Okay, if not, then I will just continue. And Baba says, the ultimate speciality of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, Raga Bhajan, is that the Sadaka is fully acquainted with his Siddha condition, even during the stage of Sadhana. So that is also very interesting. And here I want to speak or share something about Sri Rupa Goswami, because it was his. Uh, uh, disappearance day yesterday. That is when these devotees, when these, uh, you know, they are they are already realized, but they are still practicing sadhana. But in their sadhana, it's not that they have to press themselves to remember uh, who they are or who is the Radha Mohan and what service should be done at what time. It's not anything that is unnatural to them. Because it is the perfection when they are fully acquainted with their Siddha Swarup, even during the stage of sadhana. And I found a very nice uh, text about Sri Rupa Goswami. It's from uh, Shishi Uttalika Valari in the introduction. And the the topic is the tears or the steam of separation. Sripad Rupa Goswami is an eternally liberated associate of the Lord who descends to the world of sadhana to relish the mellows of sadhana, just like the sadhakas. So here we have this, uh, what? was explained here in Prima Bhakti Chandrika. The ultimate speciality of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas Raga Bhajan is that the Sadaka is fully acquainted with his Siddha condition, even during the stage of Sadhana. So it's not only that this, uh, this can be attained by mercy and by a lot of, you know, good luck and, um, humility and continuous practice and blessings of the holy dharms and of all the mahajans. But here we also hear that Rupa Goswami, he descends to the world of sadhana to relish the mellows of sadhana, just like a sadhaka. So these are the nitya, the eternally liberated souls, nitya manjaris who come here also. And to, you know, give example how to practice the sadhana in Raga Nuga Bhacha. In this dissension, the original personality of Godhead Sriman Mahaprabhu personally plunged into the mellows of sadhana. 
like a practicing he devotee who has no deep taste or attachment to the Lord, yet he says, Nahi Krishna Prema Dana Daritra Jeeva Dehendriya Brita Morasa I do not possess the treasure of love for Krishna. My life is poverty stricken, and my body and senses are all useless. So we have here this example that we were also discussing yesterday. Even those who come down from Nitya Lila, when they practice sadhana, they also have these uh, feelings of uh, humility and feelings of, I have not, I have no love, I have no taste. And that is not artificial, but they are helping us in this way not to give up because they also show us to continue and to also stay in that uh, realm of humility and deep, deep uh, desire to have it or to, to get the mercy for it. Bhakti sadhana does not only devour bodily consciousness, it even devours the transcendental consciousness of liberation and creates a solid consciousness of the beloved deity. Wow. So the, the sadhana of bhakti, what we were discussing, this ninefold kind of navana bhakti, by listening, kirtam, and hearing and remembering, servicing, giving prayers, being in a friendly relationship, and giving all our body and all our energy. It will be so powerful that it devours. What is the meaning of devour? It's like a fire. The fire devours the whole forest. It eats up all these inauspicious, uh, not usable um, things in our lives. And it will leave a good platform for Bhakti Devi to sprout so much so that the mind becomes like not uh, a distraction, not an obstacle, but like a friend. The mind will be a friend. And then when the mind becomes a friend and is a friend, we can always uh, have a very good focused um, memory and meditation. And that creates a solid consciousness of the beloved deity. So a solid means it's fixed. High bath that Gurudev always helps us to feel these feelings of continuous belonging. Not someday I feel like a Darcy and then the next day I feel like a bogey yogi again. <laughs> it can happen, but you know, then let it be only shortly. And then again, become a Darcy and remember. <laughs> so that is the power of Bhakti Sadhana. And Srila Rupa Goswami is deeply absorbed in the consciousness of service to Sri Radha. Another desire than the happiness of service to the divine pair cannot find a place in his heart. A person who tries to understand this service to Radha while remaining in physical male or female consciousness simply deceives him or herself. The service of Radha can only be grasped by a person who is totally fixed in Mandrari Bhav and who is exclusively surrendered to this. Such persons cannot find consolation for their hearts and anything else but the lotus feet of the divine pair. That is the glory of the service of Sri Radha and the glory of Bhakti Sadhana devouring, eating up all these uh, uh, things that are not useful anymore and giving us 
more and more taste and more and more steady uh, focus and steady uh, uh, meditation. Stay above meditation with no more doubt who I am, who I will be, who I always will be, or who I, you know, I always wanted to be. So the more the consciousness is purified by the practice of the nine conventional types of bhakti within the sadaka deha, the more sensual desires and bodily consciousness vanish and the stronger Svarupa Vesh gets. So the consciousness is purified, slowly but surely. It is a process. Gurudev always says, you cannot press bhakti, you cannot press mercy. We have to, you know, like be patient and at the same time be very eager. But at the same time, in humility, it's all, all uh, possible. And then the bodily consciousness vanishes and the Svarupa Vesh gets strong. That is something also that goes together. Accordingly, the absorption in the Siddha Deha becomes stronger and the astonishment due to this relish becomes manifest. Yes, we have always heard that astonishment is a very active ingredient of, of rasa or uh, feeling uh, our self in the service of Srimati Radhika. It is uh, always fresh. It's always new. It's never stale. It's never boring. It's a very exciting uh, thing because always things are happening and the Dasi doesn't really, really know what is happening. But as in astonishment, we are watching what is happening because we have not nothing to do with controlling any situation. We are observing and we are serving. Automatically, the false ego is out. Because if we don't want to control anything anymore, then what is to lose? No more uh, platform for any complaining or, uh, mm, you know, negativity. It comes when I want to control things and I want to have it my way. But if it's not like this anymore, because I have understood, even, even theoretically I have understood I am the Dasi, then I have no more things to control. I will say yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I become a yes lady. <laughs> and then life becomes easy. Also nothing more to be angry about, nothing to be um, sad or so. Just say yes. <laughs> yes, Swamini. Yes, Guru Devi. Yes, I will do as you like, as you want. I will be your puppet. Let me dance according to your desires. So, accordingly, the absorption in the Siddha Deha becomes stronger and the astonishment due to this relish becomes manifest. We are astonished because what is happening now? I don't know. I don't know what is happening, but I am watching. Wait and watch. No? This is one of Gurudev's uh, very popular sayings. Gurudev, how it just will be? How can it be? How will it be? Wait and watch. <laughs> that is a mandri bath. It's very simple. <laughs> Hence, Srila Thakur Mahashai speaks of mental devotional service rendered to Sri Radha Mohan within the mentally conceived Siddha Deha throughout the eight parts of the day. If I have not received my, my uh, Siddha Deha, I will just remember that I am a Dasi. That is also very beautiful. And I will be eager to, to uh, get this uh, 
Revelation by Gurudev's mercy. Along with the nine conventional types of devotion, such as hearing, chanting, deity service, and so on. Along, it's not separate. It goes hand in hand. Sometimes I do this, and then again I remember how am I doing this, in which consciousness I am dasi, I am aspiring, this and that mandri. And I try to imbibe it into my whole existence. That is my practice. And I pray for um, more focused and more deeper ability to serve. Yes, and now Baba says this. Another meaning of Gupati, Sadibi Siddhi, Sadhana, Navada Bhakti may be that the sadhaka should not reveal his realizations in bhajan to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, but proceed towards Pava City in great secrecy. Of course, with our brothers and sisters, we can exchange and we can even like try to confirm, you know, this happened to me. Is this, uh, have you also had this? Or, or, you know, I just thought this and this. Is it real? Is it, uh, what is it? Is it? Uh, what do you feel about this? But we don't go around and tell everyone, yeah, blah 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 blah, and try to glorify ourselves, you know, in a very uh, gross way by speaking about our bhajan and our endeavors to grow in bhakti. It can be uh, dangerous because the people easily misunderstand when they don't practice uh, raga bhakti or if they and. Uh, um, have not so uh, much um, uh, experience. But try to be simple and try to be friendly. We were practicing this, right? Raja Sundari and Goravani, we went to the yoga festival. We also practiced simplicity and listening to the people and uh, not so much talking about ourselves, but listening and making friendship with the people. And then easily they become interested. If somebody is not so much ego-centered, they can listen and they can empathy, you know, practice uh, very nice and sweet listening with some feelings. And immediately the people will become inspired to listen also. What are you doing in life? What is your goal? What is your intention? Um, where, do you, where are you learning your wisdom and this and that? Prema or experience in bhajan is like a steam power. Now comes a very, very sweet and also deep uh, example. Why not to speak so much about our experiences? Prema or experiences in bhajan is like a steam power. Like a pressure cooker, you know, pressure cooker, then you have the fire and then it goes... And sometimes it has a sound to it. Bing! That is steam pressure or steam power. When it is compressed within a steam engine, it pow its power increases tremendously. And as a result, it can perform work that even thousands upon thousands of human bodies cannot perform. So this is the power of steam power. It is also in the mechanical way used in former times with the uh, locomotions. No? They were also, first they had to make a steam power so that the, the train can run. But we also know it in the household from the power steam cooker that can cook things in a very quick time. Even in five minutes, the steam cooker can cook vegetables. In the same way, if the swelling of prema or experiences in bhajan are confined or compressed within the heart, its power will enhance unlimitedly and quickly bring the sadaka soul to the kingdom of God. So the swelling of prema or these uh, devotional feelings, our savaras, the 
feelings to surf in a certain way or meditate and you know imagine our services in our mentally conceived identity of a Darcy when it is compressed when it is kept within the heart the power will enhance You know, I am also a very talkative person. And sometimes I have the experience, if I talk too much and all the time, afterwards I feel very empty. Especially if I am talking out of ego or the desire to be appreciated. Then I feel empty afterwards. Because it's like an endeavor to keep attention of people just to glorify myself, my ego, my this material body and whatever. But if we are keeping our bhajan, our meditations internally, we don't speak so much about it. We can feel how this is growing in our hearts. We don't need to always express everything in words. It sometimes cannot even expressed in words. Somebody wants to share on this? But there are two kinds of words. When we are saying things which is enhancing to our services and to our you know, practice in bhakti, then it's not uh, talking for my own glorification. Then this is actually glorifying. Then it is service. So as a sadhaka, I have to learn this. What is the difference between my self-glorification on my um, bodily and mentally uh, habits I always try to be good try to look good try to impress <laughs> and what is glorifying the divine couple the service to Srimati Radhika Bhakti Gurudev the Vaishnavas the Mahajans that is the natural function of our souls and that is to be practiced. And that is a good talking, a good speaking, a good uh, purification of our tongue. <laughs> because we know the tongue can be so greedy. But if we are greedy to glorify, to sing bhajan, and to hear and to listen, this is the internal power of bhakti. I'm just talking about and to myself to learn really don't talk so much about yourself and what you can and what you can't talk about the glories of bhakti and shrimati radhika and do it if by your mercy also it's happening again now today i got one invitation to the temple uh damoda priya asked me to speak on balaram punima i didn't i didn't even think that it is balaram punima <laughs> I forgot it because it's not in the calendar. So a chance. I thought, okay, in two days. Wow, Nita is calling. That's how It's a good it's a good practice, not good if so that is also we are watching what is happening and we get chance we get chance to glorify i don't want to be lazy and have excuses i want to surrender not think about it twice and just do the service that is coming And I keep my own bhajan inside, like a steam engine. 
I try. I mean, I don't have so much to hide, you know, actually, to be honest. <laughs> but I have this experience that uh, we can say things in a simple way. I want to give you an example. I also told yesterday to Gurdi. Uh, on Monday, I was also in the temple and there was one young man. His name is Robin. He was, he says, I know the Krishna devotees for so long and I was always attracted to them. And now I come here and uh, you speak about the relations, about reviving our relationship to the divine. And I spoke a little bit of what uh, Prabhupada is explaining in the Bhagavad Gita about the different relations. And he asked, uh, how can I revive my relationship to Krishna when I chant Mahamantra? And like this, we had a very nice talk. And and I thought, wow, it, by Gurudev's mercy, it became so easy to have an exchange on this level, um, very friendly level, and not like try to make it very complicated. And he was very satisfied that he can... Um, chant Maha Mantra and meditate about how to serve and how to cry out like a mother for the child, for Mother Hara, or like try to, because he is a massage therapist, how to uh, meditate, how can I massage, you know, Krishna's lotus feet, how can I connect in the service? But then I need a spiritual body. I am not, you know, like this. It was a very, very nice talk. And I could see that um, the people are so ready for it. And Gurudev, I, I just realized that you are preparing us. We are doing it and uh, you are using us like a puppet and it becomes very natural and not so complicated and we don't have to hide anything because even other devotees, they are having these questions in their hearts for long and they want to share on these topics now. Radharani is coming by full force and she is giving the taste for the personal services in a loving way and not very complicated. That's how I felt. Radharani. Yes. Uh, I feel pushed to, to say something about what you said before about not to speak uh, of our own uh, realizations and I catch this occasion to say that one year ago uh, on one of the Zoom meetings I spoke about some of my realizations but uh, now I feel bad for this because uh, I did it only to to show myself to others not to help others only because my false ego was uh, puffed up. But this only leads to suffering. Every action made of uh, to please our false ego only take to suffering uh, at least. So every action we make should be done always with a seva mood. Always with the aim to help to to please so even though i speak about my realizations it should be done with the aim to please radamon only to please radamon and only if we are authorized by my gurudev if he wants if it's his will to to speak about my realizations um in Chaitanya Shritamrita, in uh, Madhya Lila, chapter 22, verse 5, it is said that the center of the activities of a human being should always be uh, to, to serve Sri Krishna. So always in my life I have to fix this point that whatever I do, in my life is to please Radhamuan. Uh, every moment, every action, every time I speak, even 
if I'm speaking with uh, some stranger in the street, always recognizing that we are talking to one soul and always with the, the goal to, to please to please Radamuan and to please the other living entities. When we are fixed on this goal, I think we can go straight to our goal and and find steadiness. And uh, when we always, always serve, always when we are in a serving attitude and we don't think about our enjoyment, then uh, I think we can uh, win. <laughs> I think we can uh, reach our goal. And actually, Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita, always think of me, always worship me, always uh, serve me, and certainly you will come to me. So if we always serve, if we always think in our life of Radhamuan, then I think we can succeed and always being respectful to others, feel compassion. So oh, sorry. <laughs> I I felt pushed to, to express this, but uh, perhaps I I spoke again from my false ego. So no, sorry. no, no. Sorry. Oh, no, Saga, thank you for for sharing. This was very valuable and also good to listen. Very, I'm very happy that you share your deep uh, realizations about also how you feel. Uh, you know, sometimes things come from ego, and sometimes things come from uh, trying to serve. And I, I, I think I speak for all of us that we are we are more or less always in between that you know sometimes this way sometimes that way mm -hmm. but we are observing and we are we are feeling the difference and even that is already a gift it's a gift of Gurdiv, of nita it's the gift to have this reflection and so i love to hear you thank you for sharing your feelings and i always like to hear you thank you I'm very happy that you opening like this, Karuna Saga. And I'm so happy when all all devotees are opening because as a little child you try to imitate sometimes Mama and Papa. And of course this is from false ego. <laughs> It's not, it, it may be pure uh, from the intention, but false ego may be mixed. Who knows? But anyway, this is actually the way to, to come to, to the feeling, to understand what, and, and, and to, to discriminate what is really false ego and what was from the heart. So I think we have to make these experiences and under a loving, father and mother, like Gurudev, we can have, make this experience and he will correct us if we are wrong. So the only thing we can we can win is we learn. We, we have nothing to lose actually. And this is the, the, for me, it's such a precious thing that we have such an association that we can learn and we can express our feelings there are no wrong feelings. And if false ego is mixing, we will be corrected and we will learn. So everything is automatically leading into more love in pure direction. Not because we are qualified, but because of the mercy of Radharani and Gurudev. So, 
we just have to win rather than day. Yes, thank you. I can confirm this because I also was one of these people that thought if I am perfected, then I can speak, then I can share. But then you never start, Gurdjieff says. We have to start from where we are and we have to learn. We have to live also with our um, imperfections and become purified by sharing and by, you know, learning how to glorify and serve with our words also. If we will not start to never share and never say anything because we are afraid it will be wrong, it will be from false ego and this and that, then we will miss our chance. And now we are so lucky that we have such a wonderful family and Gurudev is teaching us, listening to all our small uh, uh, efforts to glorify Swamini and Bhakti and listening and um, always ready to, to help us when we stumble, when we are weak, when we feel that it's empty in my heart. <laughs> but then by Gurudev mercy, something comes. So thank you for sharing Karuna Saga and please always express yourself when you feel like it. You're very welcome. Anybody else would like to share? Okay, then I will continue. The subject was about compressing in the heart like a steam engine our experiences or our feelings also and not just speaking it like a losing energy to impress or whatever and that compressing Gurdjieff also calls it intensifying or uh, compressed feelings or condensed feelings that's actually also a process in cooking if you want to make a good ladu or if you want to make a good uh, um, uh, halaba you have to compress, you know, especially halava. You have to roast first. You roast the the, the grains, and then uh, at the same time you have the water. It's cooking, and then when it comes together, it makes a small uh, uh, explosion. And that explosion is also making a special uh, uh, structure of the halava. It becomes very fluffy and very soft and very tasty at the same time. So it's like a recipe that Baba is giving here. Compress uh, your bhajan's feelings in your heart and let it grow like a steam engine. And then when the pressure or the love becomes very strong, then uh, some more things will move. In the same way, if the swelling of prema our experiences in bhajans are confined or compressed within the heart, its power will enhance unlimitedly and quickly bring the sadaka soul to the kingdom of God. And that is also, I want to come back one more time to the glories of Srila Rupa Goswami, because here, in this um, explanation of his life, Baba is called the purport Viraha Vashpati or Vashpa, tears or steam of separation. How does this happen? How 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 are the the power of these tears or the steam of separation? Intrinsically, Shila Rupa Goswami is Braja's Sri Rupa Manjari crying for the vision of Sri Sri Radha Mohan and their personal service in a heart-rending way. I have taken shelter of your Braja Dham and now I am opening my heart to show you the tears of the severe pangs of separation 
that are locked in it. So outwardly, Srila Rupa Goswami was a very big scholar and he was writing Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. He was writing so many, many things for the future generations of Bhaktas and aspiring Dasis to learn. But inwardly, there were the severe pangs of separation locked in his heart, in her heart. Be behold the fire in your Rupa's heart. Now I want to show you my heart. My heart is full of scars. Outwardly, I am smiling. I'm using my pen. I am a walking mendicant. But inwardly, there are steams of prema, condensed feelings. And these came out slowly in his songs and also here in his Shishi Ut Utkalika Valari. A person who is bereft of the treasure of bhajan cannot pass possibly fathom these severe feelings of love and separation. So when we have no much realization of our own uh, spiritual practices, it's difficult to uh, feel it in the same way. But it is very auspicious to hear about it. By hearing about it, also we can develop a taste to go deep and deeper. Not stay on the shallow platform of religious performances, but pray and beg for more feelings and more realizations and condensed practice means practice that comes from inside and is also experienced inside wave after wave the desire come up in the ocean like heart of a person who thus suffers this separation The bondage of patience is broken and the devotee cannot find peace even if he gets an occasional vision. Such occasional visions are like lightning flashes in the night. After the flash has disappeared, the darkness of the night becomes even deeper than it was before. This condition of love in separation is certainly the highest goal of the devotee's life. Weeping is the attainment and wailing is relishable. No one else but a person who has experienced it can understand it. A person who has this prema in their heart can understand it. It is like a blend of poison and nectar. It was while relishing these ecstasies that Sriman Mahaprabhu elongated the joints of his bones. And it was in the frenzy of this flavor that he withdrew his limbs like a turtle. So that is the level of prema bhakti. Because on that level, the body cannot contain these feelings anymore. And the body is uh, limited to contain these uh, feelings of Mahabhav. And we have heard also yesterday again in the sharing, or was it the day before when, ah, I think it was on Wednesday when Sundaram was asking Gurudev, or I heard the lecture, I get mixed up sometimes, <laughs> when he was asking how is that, how is in the Mahaban Mantra this Mahabhav and how we can uh, understand it, that Mahaprabhu was relishing it and then Gurudev explained that 
when uh, Mahaprabhu was feeling like Krishna was feeling the feelings of Radhika, he became Radhika. He became Mahabhav. He became absorbed. And and then he had this uh, extraordinary transformation of his body. And these were the signs that he was completely in Srimati Radhika's feelings. And that is why this Audarya or this generous feelings are now available because they were expressed, they were experienced, and they were also relished not only by Mahaprabhu but all these devotees who are connected with him, especially Srimati Radhika's maidservants like Rupa Manjari, who came also to share this and to give this to the world. Because we know whenever Srimati Radhika feels something, her, her dasis also feel the same thing. So when Mahaprabhu was relishing this Mahabhav and these feelings of separation, also Rupa Manjari was expressing them at the same time writing in Vrindavan the poems or the songs or the literature about the glories of love and separation. Okay, Radhe Radhe, I want to stop here. It is two minutes to two and we are we don't want to interrupt with the Ketan class today. Is there anything else you would like to share? Anything anybody would like to add or ask? Well, I'm very happy that you all came to to fill the eager ears and to drink with the ears and talk with the eyes. And uh, we are coming closer to a very good time of auspicious festivals and great uh, meetings. We will, many of us will meet in Vrindavan soon. And uh, the room of Gurudev will fill up again. We will be stacked there. I don't know what Gopinath and Gopika have in plan, <laughs> but they just came back and I'm very happy to be in all of your association very soon. Thank you, Gurudev, for giving us the chance to learn under your guidance, under your sweet lotus feet and your loving glances. Always ready to listen to our little babbling. You know, the kids, when they don't know how to speak, they are babbling. <laughs> Gurudev is like a loving mother. She listens and she, yes. <laughs> and the talk of the child is like this. <laughs> So also I feel like this sometimes. And Gurudev and all the Vaishnavas are very uh, patient listening and blessing these uh, efforts to do some service. Thank you all. Radhe Radhe. Radhe.